All right, in problem number 37 of section 3.5, we're asked to find the volume of a torus, which is kind of a fancy mathematical term for a donut. Um, and you can make one by taking a, we can make a solid torus, this we're thinking of you know, filled in, not just the shell or the frosting. Um, you take one by taking a disc in the xy plane and rotating it around the y-axis. So we center this disc at um, zero, capital R, and we'll let the radius um, the disk be r, so little r smaller than um, big R. All right, well then, um, so let's let this be r. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take this disk, which is um, solid disk that's filled in, and just rotate it around the y-axis. Now, to find the volume of this, we're going to use um, washers. So we've got to figure out first which, where we want to take the cross-sections. Now, cross, if we can imagine the z-axis coming straight out of the board, uh, the cross-sections that we're going to want to take are kind of slicing in like this. So if you want to, probably an easier way to think about this is if you took the um, torus here. Uh, so you can kind of imagine this is like a donut laying straight, straight on the table. Our cross sections are just going to be slices uh, horizontally like this. So in this case, um, our slices are going to be um, perpendicular to the board, and we're going to be kind of slicing from radius is r, so we're going to have, be going from minus r to uh, positive r. So our, we're going to be integrating, um, let's actually just look at a cross section of uh, our typical slice. So we'll be looking at the xz plane now. And um, Typical slices, oh, I didn't draw that too well, it should be centered at the origin. Right, so a typical um, cross section is going to be uh, an annulus like this, or you know, just kind of a ring with some inner radius and some outer radius. And those inner and ra outer radi uh, radii are going to be changing over time. So I mean, if you can imagine taking a cross section um, at, well, minus r, and you're just kind of slicing the top of the donut, and you're, both the inner and outer radius are going to be really close together. And if we go all the way to the center, well, then uh, inner radius is just going to be uh, this distance here. So r minus, you know, big r minus little r. And the outer radius would be the entire distance um, r plus big r, or little r plus big r. So the main thing here is to figure out what exactly, um, or f find a formula for, you know, given any y value, since we're going to be integrating uh, from y equals negative r to r, uh, any y value, we need to be able to figure out what the inner and outer radius will be. So let's call the inner radius um, little r0 and the outer radius capital R0. All right, so in other words, what we need to do is find you know, for some given y value, we'll have this. Um, in pink here will be the inner radius. And um, let's, see, let's use green. All the way out here will be the outer radius. And we just need to figure out exactly um, what R0 and capital R0 will be. Well, we know that this distance here is r. Um, this is getting a little small, so I'm going to 
I'll draw this picture a little bit bigger. So if we've got negative r down here, positive r up here, um, for some y value we want to find out what this distance is and also what this distance is. And we want to find those in terms of what we know, well the radius r, and our y coordinate. Well, we can see that uh, if we figure out, uh, since this point here is x equals 0, y equals, or uh, excuse me, x equals r, y equals 0. Should change in the wording of the problem. Uh, well then, this distance r naught is just going to be capital R minus whatever this distance is. Let's call this distance for now x naught. Now we can use the Pythagorean theorem on this triangle here to get that uh, x naught squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And of course that implies that uh, see x naught is what we're solving for. Squared is equal to r squared minus y squared and take the square root of that. And we can leave the positive square root since we're just interested in the distance. So now we know that um, small r naught is equal to well, capital R minus uh, x naught, so capital R minus square root of r squared minus y squared. And we can do kind of this, make the same argument over here, where we have radius r and look for another x value here. But I mean, we'll just be doing we'd just be doing that on the other side of the circle. It's completely symmetric. So this um, capital R naught is just equal to r. Well, now we want to add this x value, so r plus the square root of r squared minus y squared. So now that we have the inner and outer radius for any uh, given y value, now we want to actually integrate and over the area of a typical cross section from y equals negative r to r. So volume will be equal to the integral from minus r to positive r of, well, remember that our typical cross section looks like something like this. So the area is going to be the area of the outer circle, so pi times r naught squared, and subtract off the area of the inner circle, which is kind of what we're missing in the, so that's minus pi times small r naught squared um, dy. All right, so we can factor out the pi. And it leaves us with the integral from minus r to r of r naught um, squared minus, capital R naught squared minus small r naught squared. So that's, if we make the substitutions, this r plus square root of r squared minus y squared, quantity squared, and minus quantity r r minus square root of r squared minus y squared, uh, quantity squared. 
and we're integrating with respect to y. Now, we can kind of save ourselves a little bit of work here if we just look at the integrand for a minute when we simplify. We see that these terms are pretty similar except for the plus and the minus sign. So if we expand this out, we're going to get an r squared term. Then we're going to be subtracting an r squared term from the expansion of um, the second term of the integrand. So those will just cancel each other out. Uh, we'll get a mixed term here, and the sign will be positive, so plus, two, uh, plus 2r two square root of r squared minus y squared. And the mixed term here will be negative, but then the negative sign will cancel out there. So we'll be left with pi times the integral from negative r to r of 4r square root of r squared minus y squared. And let's see, we'll get a term that is just r squared minus y, squ uh, y squared. But then we're just going to subtract off that same term here. So our integral is left, uh, reduces just to that. And we can pull out 4 pi r. I'm going to have one last trick in uh, this problem. Rather than evaluating that integral directly, which would be a little messy, and rather not do that since there's a much easier way, let's just think about what the integrand uh, is. Um, if you think about it, it's actually a semicircle uh, in the upper half plane of radius r. And if that's not immediately apparent to you, you can just well, think of what the equation for this semicircle would be. I mean, the equation for a circle is um, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, so a circle with radius r. So then we would solve this uh, for, uh, actually, excuse me, this should be a semicircle in the right. Um, the right half plane since it's in terms of y, not x. It would look like this instead. Well, we solve this for x now. So this is x equals r squared minus y squared. You would take the square root. Um, and since we're only looking at values, that are positive, we'd only take the positive square root. So you can see that now here if we you know, take this, integrate this from negative r to r, well, we're just going to get this area. In other words, the area of half a circle of radius r. So this here is just um, equal to uh, 1 half pi times r squared. So now this whole thing reduces to uh, well 1 half times 4 is just 2 times pi. We got times pi times pi, so 2 pi squared times uh, big R times little r squared. 